me take a look at uh, a couple more of examples of this type. Here's another <coughs> classic example involving an exponential function. In fact, the shape is very close to what we've done already. e to the minus x starts out at 1, and in fact, it falls off exponentially, which is actually pretty fast. So to do this kind of a problem, which is typical for your homeworks, you're going to say, well, let's let t go, go to infinity, where t is the upper limit. You may want to spend a few more moments doing the integration, but it will turn out to be e minus e to the minus x from 0 to t. And as you plug in the limits of integration, you'll get 1 minus e to the minus t as you push things around, and that will turn out to be also equal to 1, amazingly. So the total area under this curve is 1, but uh, really what happened was we said the area from 0 to t is 1 minus e to the minus t. Okay, the yellow area over a finite region is, in fact, 1 minus e to the minus t. As t goes to infinity, this area sh swells up to it's 1. It's the lower limit, which is the infinite limit. So if we take a look at this picture, you're getting a curve that, as it turns out, looks something like this. It's actually symmetrical around the x-axis, and what we're going to be interested in is the area all the way to the left of 2 of something like that. Now, I would say at this point, at least in your careers as mathematicians or whatever, it's pretty hard for you to look at an integral and say, yeah, that thing converges or diverges. And uh, it's even harder, of course, to say, well, it converges to such and such. So uh, don't make any guesses. I'll guess is what I'll say is just go ahead and try to evaluate the thing. Now, once you've seen this, I think it isn't all that surprising. The problem here is on the left, so we'll cut off the integral on the left. We'll cut off the area on the left and find that area from t to 2 and then let t go down to minus infinity. Mr. Shea was asking about basically will we have to do any fancy integrals the, the answer is you might, but for the most part, I think you'll find almost all the integrals the kind that you can do in a couple of lines, assuming you know your basic forms. In this case, that's an a squared plus x squared. In fact, that is the inverse tangent itself, pretty much. So as I recall, that's one-half inverse tangent of x over 2, okay, evaluated from t to 2. This will be the limit as t goes down to negative infinity. Putting in the upper limit, we'll get 1 half inverse tangent of 1, that's 2 over 2, minus 1 half inverse tangent of t over 2. Well, it, it gets a little tricky now. Uh, the first one's no problem. I happen to know what the inverse tangent of 1 is. So do you. What is it? What angle has tangent 1 in radians? <coughs> pi over 4. So it's pi over 4 times a half, which will be a pi over 8, minus, okay, here comes the tricky part. What happens to the inverse tangent function as its argument goes to minus infinity? And that re requires a little bit of a knowledge of pictures, perhaps. Let me slap one up here for you. The inverse tangent function looks a bit like this. And if you recall, it has these horizontal asymptotes at plus and minus pi over 2. And that's what we're really after. We're saying, well, as you let the argument go out here to minus infinity, what does the inverse tangent function start doing? It goes down to, as a matter of fact, that negative pi over 2. So what we get is a pi over 8 minus a negative pi over 2. 
which looks like 5 <coughs> pi over 8, I guess. And I guess that's the answer then. The area under this portion of the curve to the left of 2 would be 5 pi over 8. I'm sure you wouldn't have guessed that, but uh, in fact, it is finite and it has that value. So for infinite limits of integration, you basically back off, evaluate a proper integral, and take a limit. That's all there is to it. Now, there is one little extra case that I must mention, and that is what if both limits are infinite? In fact, let's take this example we just had. <coughs> you have to be careful. This thing should not put some big X's through here, should not be evaluated like this. That sometimes will give you the wrong answer. And again, the book says it, I'll say it, just avoid it. Don't do it that way. If it's doubly improper, break it up into two parts improper in one direction and improper in the other direction. Okay, break it up into two improper integrals where you can handle the impropriety separately. And of course, we've just done this one on the left. This was the 5 pi over 8. Uh, this one, I'll let you figure out on your own. Now, I broke it at 2 because we have to know what that, inter that particular value is. You could as easily broken it at 0, if you prefer, or as it turns out, you can actually use any number you want. You can go from minus infinity to any number, and from that number on, <coughs> you'll always get the same number if it exists when you take the limit. Uh, thinking about that, let's come back over here and say if we integrated from minus infinity to 0, Where would the difference be? I guess uh, a little tough to say. I guess this would have been a 0 here. This would have given us a pi over 2. Looks like we get pi over 2 on the left and pi over 2 on the right. So I'm going to make a, a stab in the dark and say it's pi. You can check me out on that. So if you wanted the entire area, both left and right of 0, then I think maybe it's pi. Again, this is an area under this curve the graph over that region. Negative, Pardon? The graph, is never negative. the graph is never negative. That's why I say it's impossible to get a negative 2 for my area. <coughs> Correct? Why, that that integral from zero to zero? why 0? What's wrong with 0? Oh. It's undefined at 0. It's undefined at 0. That's what's staring in the face. I've just integrated past 0 where the function is not defined. In fact, it shoots off to plus infinity. And of course, these are the things that really trip you up. These kinds of integrals over here are pretty obvious. You've got infinity staring you in the face. But every so often, you come across an integral like this one. And I would hate to build, uh, let's say, rocket launchers based on the fact that I got a negative 2 out of that integral. Sometimes those rocket launchers don't work, they say. Now, I hope it's not for that reason right there. The possibility is that we integrated over discontinuity. Uh, I erased it right down here at one point. I said an integral was proper the kinds we've handled in the past. If the limits of integration are finite, okay, we've handled that case now. The other thing was we also only considered integrals where the integrand is continuous. And now we've got that problem to face as well. So uh, before I go on, let me say that this is all dead wrong. That is not a correct answer, simply because I haven't played by the rules of the game that we've set up. How about 1 over radical x? Now, this is a little bit more apparent. You see, I hid the problem before. Here it's real blatant. The limit of integration there is the problem point for the integrand. And what you're looking at is a function that basically just comes swooping down from infinity. And out here at 3, or pardon me, at 9, we'll have a function that looks something like that. So the question is, just like before, 
but in a different perspective, I suppose, is what's the area under that particular curve where, in fact, it shoots off to plus infinity. Well, the answer is, uses the same philosophy that we just used, and that is zero is a bad point, like infinity used to be, so we'll back off from it. What I'll do is chop off the function here at t, evaluate from t to 9, and then let t shrink back to 0. Again, the orange area you see should swell up to the yellow area, and then we'll know what the value is, if it's anything. So using the same philosophy, the problem here being 0 requires that I take the limit as t drops down to 0 of this now proper integral. You see, the whole point of improper integrals is to cook up proper ones and then take limits, things that you can actually legitimately evaluate and then take limits. So let's see, if we take this one, how does that go? t goes down to 0. This is uh, x to the minus 1 half, so it would be x to the plus 1 half over a half. That would be 2 radical x from t to 9. And if you plant the limits in there, t goes down to 0. We'll have 2 radical 9, which will be 6, minus 2 radical t. <coughs> well, as t goes down to 0, it's pretty obvious. That goes to 0, and we'll get 6. So once again, it's not a number I would have guessed. The total area under the curve is 6. And notice that the area in the orange region was 6 minus 2 radical t. For the benefit of those who really want to see what the picture is all about, orange area was 6 minus 2 radical t. That swells up to 6 for the entire yellow area. So those kinds of problems, pretty easy if you isolate the discontinuities and put them on the, the end of an integral. Now, this one over here, let me maybe kind of finish that one off today. The problem with it was that its discontinuity was right in the middle. 1 over x squared looks a bit like this. And so the region I was trying to integrate, of course, is not a good one. What you should do is evaluate this as an interval from minus 1 to 0 and as an integral from 0 to 1. The purpose, let me just say it, is to isolate the discontinuities at endpoints. That's the bad point there, and that's the bad point there, and then handle them separately. Let's take a look at the second one there. This thing should be a limit as t goes down to 0 of integral t to 1, 1 over x squared dx. If we rush into this one, I think we'll see what's going to happen. I think that's a minus 1 over x from t to 1. Plug in your limits, integration. You'll get minus 1 over t plus 1 over 1. And as t goes to infinity, ooh, the, let's see, that's a plus and a minus, pardon me. I think, uh, but uh, yes. As t goes to 0, pardon me, through the positive values, that thing goes to plus infinity. Now, it's a little quick, but we're running out of time here. What that says is that the area over here is plus infinity. You can see symmetrically, or if you work it out, the other side is the same. So that's why we got that funny number, was that we're really dealing with infinities here. And if anything, this thing is going to be plus infinity, or best probably to say that it diverges as an improper integral. It really doesn't have a finite a value. Okay, next time we'll take a look at a few more, not so much detail perhaps, but just to kind of, again, remind you that there are bad spots in integrals, what you should do to look for them, and what you should do to evaluate them if it's possible. Okay, we'll see you next time.